Hello Lamb fans, um, another assembly video of uh, my Lotus Lamb Series 2. Uh, in this video we'll have a look at the windscreen fitting and then we'll catch up on all sorts of other things like the heater box assembly, generally what's happening in the engine bay, uh, some details on master cylinder for the brakes and any other bits of video I can find that I haven't included yet. Okay, so see what we find. I've fitted um, a foam gasket on the heater box which pushes against this blend chamber. So just going to have a go at fitting this heater box and the vent pipes. So there's the heater box in place with the tubes, vent tubes connected. This is the reconditioned uh, brake servo which I've just fixed back onto the bracket. And, um, the bracket's actually labelled uh, for MoCo, so it's a Ford bracket and it fixes down here into these three holes. So I'm just going to get that fixed in place. So there it is, fixed in place in the nose of the car. I'll show you where the fixings are at the other side. And underneath the wheel arch. Those are the three fixings. Uh, this is the uh, clutch mast cylinder and when I fitted it I found that the clutch pedal and the brake pedal were at different heights and when I investigated further found that the push rod fitted to this um, cylinder was too short so I've managed to find a replacement. Um, you can see the name of the company on the bag, Rimmer Brothers and uh, I'll just zoom in actually um, to show you the part number. So you can see the part number um, of the replacement item, should someone need to know it. But the difference is the, um, the length between the centre of the clevis pin hole and the end of the push rod. You can see on this one um, it's measuring, oh, there's a bit of parallax error there, but it's measuring about 74 millimetres and uh, the replacement is about 81 millimetres, which was pretty much spot on. The other thing about this replacement is it's adjustable. Um, it's quite a bit thicker, the fork, um, at the end you can see, compared with the original. Um, but it does fit over the pedal, um, and it's the same size hole. You may need a slightly longer clever spin, we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to fit it. Okay, I did need to get um, a longer clevis pin for that uh, new push rod which had thicker, a thicker fork at the end. Um, so this is the, the one that I needed. I've taken the um, windscreen frame off and now um, put sealant underneath the uh, joint here and bolted it back on. So it's now fixed in place. Um, I also made sure the little um, threaded nipple, um, if that's the correct term, was in place with a washer underneath it as well so that this can be tensioned. Um, and the other thing I've tidied up is the on the Series 2, certainly the late Series 2, um, this is the one where it's got two fixing screws here, the earlier ones had one. Um, the earlier ones seem a bit neater, the late one's got a massive hole here I'll just get a bit yeah, closer. So the, um, there's a nice reflection there. It's making it not obvious what you're looking at. Um, so the later ones have got a big hole here. Um, and of course water could just come down and straight into the car. So I've sealed it up. So the reason this is black in there is because I've put um, a piece of sort of vinyl um, and then sealed it from behind rather than just sort of filling it full of silicon rubber sealant. So it's a bit ugly on the back, but there's my piece of vinyl. I just sealed it down both edges so water can't get in. So I think that's a nice, neater solution. Um, you can see a bit of light coming through because um, it's clear silicon, but when the um, dashboard top is in place, 
Uh, you won't see that light shining through it. Uh, I now have a windscreen in place, which is, um, well, something. I've had this a long time in storage and I did wonder whether it would be any good. I was a bit worried it might be deformed and it may still be. because I've got a gap here to put that um, silver piece in. But as we go down the side there's no gap at all. Um, and yeah, the bottom corners feel as though they're just a bit stuck out. So hmm, maybe it's okay, but I'm not sure. I'll show you the other side. Uh, I've also glued the crash pad in place as well. Um, using some spray adhesive type of thing that you would use for fixing uh, the underlay and the carpet into the car as well. Just have a look at these. Though. This is the other side. Um, Again, you can see there's a decent gap here and then it completely closes up. And yeah, is it going to work? I don't know. I'll see. I'm going to borrow the tool that you need to get this silver strip in, which uh, properly tightens the window rubber. Another little detail, um, I've got these Tenax fastenings on these little brackets. They pick up on one of the screws that holds the um, windscreen frame in place and also you can see that's a, one of the two of the screws that hold the windscreen frame and also either side of this tie wire there's uh, two screws go through here um, I've used 2BA screws I'm not sure if that's exactly the right thing and I'm sure I'll paint these black just to make them completely disappear before that trim goes in um, sorry, trim, um, the air vent grill. Okay, so happy it's gone in. Um, we'll see if I'm happy when I try and get that silver strip in around the uh, rubber. We have a windscreen in place. Um, I've managed to get this windscreen in. The windscreen I've had for a very long time and I was worried it wasn't going to fit. It, it felt as though it was a little bit too wide. Um, and it may be, but it's sort of giving a little bit. This is a new seal from um, Woolies and the silver strip, this one isn't long enough, it was just temporarily in place. This piece was a short bit given to me by a friend, Richard. So I'm going to replace the silver strip that's in there with the one that's the correct length now. So I've got a longer piece, so I need to feed it through. So it was this corner that I was worried about because the first time I did it there was quite a gap this time of the seal. Um, but this time around it's gone very nicely. I had to work the tool backwards and forwards a bit because it was pushing the rubber, ruckling it up as it went around this corner. I'll just show you the tool I've used. Um, it's looking a bit manky now but uh, I made it um, based on the image in the workshop manual so it's just a bit of coat hanger wire that I've polished up and shoved into an old file handle so this just stretches the seal open. This is the original seal that was on the car and it's it's incredibly stiff it's oh there you go <laughs> it's not at all flexible um, so it's aged a lot but it's uh, more like a plastic than a rubber now and this is a piece of the uh, seal that I cut out just pop it on there um, just a section that I cut from the seal and uh, it's extremely stretchy 
and that was from Woolies. Let me catch up then. Um, you can see I've got that board in there, which is a mill board. It's like compressed cardboard which is probably riveted in place. I copied the one that came off which was in a real mess. Um, I replaced the two little plastic clips um, with new ones which I was gifted by a good friend Richard. I'm um, pretty sure I know where that uh, spare blue wire is leading to but I'm going to meter it just to make sure. I think it comes down to the fan, this group of fan wires so Pretty sure I understand how to connect that now. Got the brake pipes into the servo now, which run across to the master cylinder and down to uh, like a five-way connector, which has got the um, switch for the brake lights on it. It's a bit obscured by this handbrake cable. Um, what else? What else? I've repositioned that wire that I'd got going to the dynamo. Pretty certain it's an earth cable that should run up with the other earth cable and I've metered those across to check um, that there is a circuit on all the earth which there is. Um, what else what else? So it's starting to look a bit more uh, busy down there. Oh I swapped the bolts, um, the chassis bolts. So I had some very long ones in the boot um, and short ones here. Um, so I've swap them over so the long ones are here so this is where um, the horns would have been mounted I don't have the original horns um, I do have these which were in the car um, air horns so I'm going to tidy those up and I'm going to make a bracket to fix them across those two fixings um, they were originally installed up here on this car which I filled all those holes in having been uh, advised that I should do so which was an extremely sensible suggestion. Um, windscreen's in as you've seen which I'm very pleased with now. I didn't think it was going to fit because I'd had that windscreen in storage for mm. 20 years so I thought it might have fallen out of shape and I'm just was worried that it had curled out as it were going back to its original flat shape I guess. Anyway it's not bad um, I'm pretty pleased with this seal now. Um, Hopefully it'll be watertight. I might just want to run a little bead of black silicon in, maybe, which was another suggestion from Richard. Um, I'm very happy that I dug out the old rubber mats, which are just, as you can see, just taped in place at the moment. These are the original. Um, it's extremely um, uh, coarse finish, um, sometimes called alligator hide. Um, I've seen it described as. Uh, these have been in storage since the car came to bits which was about 20 something years ago. Um, so I've got them, they're not in great shape uh, particularly where the battery was, you can see it's obviously rotted it. But I am going to try and recover them and clean them up because the replacements you can get uh, they're very nice um, not quite the same texture so if I can recover these, I really want to. Um, I'll just get a close-up of this bit, and then you can see what this is. What the original finish is like. Um, it's really, really rough, as you can see. Um, hopefully, you can see. So it's going to take some cleaning because uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's extremely con well contoured. Is that the right name? Not really. Oh, that's a nice picture of it. Let me just see if the camera will focus any better than that. Yeah, so the light's falling on that quite nicely. So you can see um, that's a hole where um, a radio, uh, radio speaker was mounted. So I'm going to put that back. But yeah, if I can clean this up um, and get it looking good enough, then I'm really, really keen to use it. So, on the rubber mats, um, heater box went in um, a while back, and these um, hoses that go up to the uh, grill. I've got a crash pad in place, and the grills just sat there. Mm, the glass. The grills sat there, not fixed in place yet. 
um, boot. This boot seal, which was annoying me, um, you can see what happens. <laughs> it just gets deformed by the lock. Um, I've painted this now um, and I've rounded off that leading edge so as it closes, sorry, this leading edge, this leading edge, so as it closes it's, um, it's sort of sliding underneath that rubber down here a bit better. Uh, anything else to show in there? I don't think so, not that you haven't already seen. Okay, um, yeah. Putting the glass in, definitely another one of those milestones, I think, and getting the crash pad in place. So I'd like to get the interior mats cleaned up and fitted, would be a good next step um, before I start doing anything with dashboards and uh, other fittings and stuff.